Hello everybody, this is Cody here from Bots Poses, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to correct the typology on pretty much all of your models. And I find this works really, really good for 3D printing, so if you're trying to sculpt, say like on the model that you see here, if I were to go in and I tried to smooth this, it would start to pull vertices that I don't necessarily want to smooth out with it. So that becomes a really, really big problem, especially when you're doing 3D printing and you're trying to get specific details down. Or if you're trying to subdivide the model within Blender can be a, quite a resource hog. So what we actually do is we have a new program here, which we're actually going to be using today. And this is called Instant Meshes. So you are going to be needing two things today. These are both free programs. You are going to be needing Blender. And you're going to be needing Instant Meshes. You can get Instant Meshes on the GitHub and you can get it for Windows, Linux and Mac. So let's get started into this. So I have Blender open right now. So I'm just going to show you the vertices that we need to correct and what we have to do to get this into Instant Meshes. So I'm going to take my model. I'm going to go on over to edit mode and you're going to notice right away that these vertices are pretty much unacceptable because we got these little triangles right here. We got these big triangles right here. And if we were to subdivide this just the way it is, it's basically just going to cut everything in half and then triangulate. It's just going to cut it all in half again, right? So. We're still going to be dealing with uh, some uh, what I call subliminal ge uh, ge geometry. So basically, it's just like uh, these tiny ass little triangles right here that I do not like. And if we were to try to smooth this out, it's just going to look really boxy and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this into instant meshes and we're going to fix all of those problems. So the first thing you need to do is take your model. So this is an STL file, by the way. So you can do this from multiple different formats. but what we have to do is we have to export this as an OBJ and that because because uh, OBJ is what the uh, instant meshes takes as its format and PY. So what we're actually going to do is uh, get this out into OBJ. I already have it. So what I'm going to do now is boot up instant meshes. OK, now that we're inside of instant meshes, you're going to look notice right away that it's very simple, right? So this is a bonus for this software and I find this software is magic. So. The next thing we're going to do is obviously open up our mesh. So you're going to click open, hit OBJ, and then you're going to find your mesh that you exported. Remember, it does have to be an OBJ file. So I'm just going to go down and find my Balrog. So I'm just going to wait for that to open up. It may look like it's frozen or hung, but it is opening. And this does work really, really well on low performance computers. I have tested this myself on computers without a graphics card compared to trying to do things in Blender without a graphics card. It's just absolutely madness. So. So the first thing we're going to have to do right here is actually check its count, right? So right now we're going to notice that it started at 13 and in Blender it was 34. So we're obviously going to have to increase this a little bit. But I'm just going to go over a few things first. So under the tool field, you're going to notice the first solve button. We need to do click both of these to be able to get this model out to begin with. What solve is going to do is paint these lines all over your model. And basically what that's doing is telling the computer what's the best direction in the best path to put the subdivisions on so it's basically telling what's the 3d object and what's not as you can see that there is lines underneath his armor just as i would expect which is really good instead of just going over the surface of the model this is getting all of the geometry subdivided so now when i hit solve right here you're going to notice this is our subdivision map and this looks all right like so that's that's already pretty much fixed, but you're going to notice right away if I go to export mesh and then extract, this is where it bakes the subdivision, that we're going to have a bunch of these errors. And now these are missing panels. I don't know why it does that. So what we're actually going to have to do is increase our vertex count. So I'm going to bring this up to 80,000 just to see what happens. Don't mind this resolution thing. We want it to be a higher resolution. So I'm going to wait for this to build. This normally doesn't take long at all. I find it's better to go up in your vertex count in steps instead of going from, say, 1 to, like, 200,000. Go 1 to, what, like, uh, 80,000, then to 150,000, and then to your 200, I find works best. But now you notice when I click the solve button is that there's more uh, pronounced lines on here. There's much more of those lines on here, and that's really good because when we go to solve now, you're going to notice that our subdivision that's a lot tighter around the model, but we're still going to have some of those errors. So there's a few things we can do to actually start fixing this if you have tight edges like I do. We can go up into quads and change this to triangles, and then we can resolve. Okay, now you're going to notice a, a bigger abundance of lines there. Now we're going to hit solve again down here. 
And now look at our subdivision mat. Now that looks absolutely incredible compared to what we were dealing with before, especially right here in the face. And if you notice right now that this bar was still going up after it showed it to us, always make sure this bar finishes loading before you go into the next step. So now if I go into export mesh and do it, the extract mesh, AKA the bake, we're gonna, you're gonna notice right away that we probably have much fewer uh, errors in our model, as you see. We barely have any errors in it at all, which is really good, and we're only at 80K. So what I'm actually gonna do is bring this from 80K to 116. And we're gonna keep going up on this slider until we find that sweet spot for our model where it starts to correct. Sometimes if you go from one to say 300,000, your model can come out messed up. So it's always best, that's why I'm telling you to go in like increments of like 50k samples. That way you're getting, you, you know, you're finding that sweet spot a little bit more accurate. So we're going to build it again. Into the lines, we're going to hit solve. And you notice our subdivision mat's way tighter now this time. So that's really good. And it usually only takes the same amount of time every time we do this. So in Blender, the more subdivisions you do, the laggier your computer is going to get. I find this program r works really well, especially if you're just jumping right into it. So you could do this in minutes if you know exactly what you're doing in this software. Like you have advanced options here. You have aligned boundaries, sharp creases, which I should be pressing because we do have a bunch of sharp creases, but I'm just doing this to show you that we can achieve the goal. So I'm gonna hit extract mesh again and see what the bake looks like. Not bad, so we can go a little bit higher. So I'm gonna take my vertex count. I'm gonna bring it up to about 187. Now you might not run into these errors that I'm seeing here. This is just because I have the armor and they are very, very thin. I don't know if it would matter if you scaled it up in Blender even further before exporting, if that would help. But uh, I find just going up in the increments, I found uh, this model worked best on 200,000. So we're probably going to be hitting that anyway. But we're at 187 just to see what the minimum I can achieve this with. looks really good I'm gonna hit solve and to me that's mind-blowing right so that fixed all of the vertices issues that we had inside of blender while keeping the same you know depth of, or LOD as you would say of the model because you would think in blender if you're redoing the uh, you know the vertices and stuff like that that it would uh, completely start warping out your model and stuff but it's seems to handle pretty well okay now we're gonna export extract mesh the extract process is by far the longest to wait for but that's all right and as you see we got a pretty good model right here we do have some uh, errors on there and not too much going on on the back. So we're going to increase this one more time. So I'm going to go to about what I had it last time. So I'm going to get about 217,000 and this should be good enough. I've tested this model before doing this. I was just showing you that to go up in increments will matter a lot. So I'm going to wait for it to rebuild. So even usually if you just wanted to make like a really fast process, you could just drag your model, drop it in and instantly just drag that thing up to like 300,000 if you wanted to, right? And then you could decimate it inside of Blender. So I find once you bring this into Blender, then you convert it as a mesh and then uh, yeah, you're pretty much good to go on its face. So this should be the last solve we have to do. Not that we had to do any of the other ones, we could have went right for it. Now there is tools you can use as well to manually paint. So if you have like sharp creases like I do, you can paint over it and it will kind of guide it by a brush. And it'll uh, show you like a white line that will render it and it will try to detect the crease that you painted over. It's quite a powerful tool and it looks very simple. So that's what made this really useful to me is that it's super simple. I thought it was going to be like a blender add on or something like that. but.
Okay, now we're gonna go to export mesh. Now this should uh, fix most of the errors. I had it on 230 the last time I tried it, so we're gonna try it at 217. Shouldn't be too far off of the difference. Okay, now we got a lot better of a model, as you see. We don't have too many of the errors. We can fix all that in Blender. It's just a little bit of cornering errors right there. So now when we export this model, there's one thing we do have to do. We have to label it at the end of its file type .obj or it will give you an error. So as I hit save, I'm going to label it like uh, balrog.obj. And that's what you want to import into Blender. Because if you just do uh, balrog and then hit save, it's just going to show you an error. So if it shows you that, it's because you didn't put .obj on the back of it. So now we're pretty much good to get our balrog into Blender. So we're going to jump back on over into there. All right, now that we're back inside of uh, Blender, I can show you now that if I go into, if I click the model, and I go into edit mode, you're going to notice that we do have the subdivisions we had from the last thing. So what I did before I uh, rendered this out is I switched it back into cubic because I could just uh, triangulate it from inside of Blender. So I just left it cubic anyway, so it's always best to stay away from the triangles inside of instant meshes and just could just go with cubic it works a lot better so what i'm actually going to do next is go into sculpt mode and show you that this does work really really well so i'm going to go down into my smooth tool and say look down here on the legs and as you notice it's not pulling any of much of the other geometry around as it would if it wasn't subdivided like so I'm just going to smooth all this out and just show you. And there's another uh, little plugin that you can use as well if you're into like uh, painting and brushes and stuff like that. It's called Blender Kit. It's a little free add-on. There is a subscription uh, for it, but there's tons of free brushes. So now that I'm in sculpt mode, I'm going to go over here to my add-ons panel. I'm going to click brushes. And as you notice, up at the top, we got a bunch of brushes that popped up. And we have categories as well. And all these are free to use right now. So... What I'm actually going to do is take the cobblestone. I think that would look good as skin. And take the strength and bring it down. I'm going to start painting the cobble. It's arms. It's legs. And since the vertices were all corrected inside of instant meshes, this is really easy to 3D print now. So the issue with uh, doing models like this inside of Blender all the time is sometimes you have errors in your vertices, some faces are too thin and so forth. So always make sure you're using a solid model, by the way. You can use uh, hollow models and then solidify them. It's a simple task, but it's always best to do it with a solid. And as you see, we got nice skin on our Balrog right here. And I want some damage for his horn thing, the Jaggers right there. So what I can actually go down into is into cut or crack. There's clothing. So even if I go into like let's say the chainmail brush and I go down into his armor. Could look all dented and whatnot. Just like so. You can add bunch you can add tons of things, right? You can add pretty much anything you want. You could add a dynamic topology if you really want, so you can sculpt right back over it and correct some of the errors. But that's pretty much how you correct the geometry and all your stuff inside of Blender. So if you're into 3D printing, this is a really, really useful tool for you. So if you guys like today's video, please do like and subscribe. I got plenty more videos coming up in the future that are 3D printing related. And have yourselves a great day. Take care.